tried to make that super, super dramatic. So, Max, if you want to start off the demo, I will stop talking. All right. Looks like we can see the screen. So, yeah, real quick, uh, we're going to be showing Forge. I think most of you probably know, know what Forge is, know all about it. But uh, for anyone who doesn't, Forge is a uh, map editor that we shipped originally in Halo 3. I've been iterating on it ever since, making it uh, you know cooler and better. It's, uh, it's also part of the toolbox that the Rooster Teeth guys use uh, during the RVB episodes. So um, we thought that uh, it was time to overhaul it a little bit, make a few improvements. And uh, I hope that you guys like some of the work that we've done. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, Mike. And uh, Adam, I think, will be driving. But uh, before I do, thanks to Frank, one caveat. Um, what you guys are seeing in here is a pre-release build. It's not final. Uh, the interface, the environment, you name it, it's all uh, still in development. Not so, final. Uh, Still yeah. in development. Yep. Yeah. Which Work in said. progress. <laughs> the UI in particular is actually just sort of placeholder yep. uh, passed, passed on from reach. The, the final UI will be reflective of the rest of the Halo 4 UI. So that's absolutely the most temporary element in here. All right. So, Mike, you want to take it away? Yeah, sure thing. Um, hopefully I am loud enough uh, or louder than Jimi Hendrix's resurrected ghost that's going on in the next <laughs> hall. Uh, <laughs> But um, so we're here to talk about Forge, and as everyone said, this is a uh, this has never been seen before. And uh, with the placement of the monitor and the lights going in our eyes, Adam and I can barely see ourselves. So uh, please bear with us as we uh, uh, just using the force here. Um, so all muscle memory, all muscle memory. Well, I don't have any muscles, so uh, that's a problem for me. But um, as you can see, what we have here is. Uh, As you can see, we have uh, the ravine. Now, this is one of three Forge environments that are going to be shipping uh, in Halo 4 on November 6th. Uh, and as you can see, Adam's flying around here. Um, this is probably the most beautiful Forge environment that you've ever seen before. So we've taken a lot of care uh, to create a really kind of beautiful space for you to play in. And um, we're really excited to see when uh, we, we set you guys loose on it, what exactly you'll be um, creating. So, uh, we want to talk about a few of the uh, improvements that we've made to Forge. So, uh, oh, and you know what, there's just happened to be a nice little garbage pile here um, that had nothing to do with my presentation, but we can talk about it anyway. Okay, so in the past, um, if you had, for example, like a spawn point or something on top of uh, another object, it was a little bit of pain to, uh, to grab, but as you can see, as Adam is kind of uh, rolling over the different things in this uh, pile of garbage, uh, you see the name Palette Create Small Respawn Point. Uh, there's no guesswork in terms of what you're grabbing, so there's no trial and error. Uh, you'll be able to grab exactly what you want because when you do and you put the crosshairs over it, uh, the name will um, highlight and you will know exactly what you're picking up. So uh, that's one of the improvements we put in Forge for Halo 4. Um, so if you have something, so this bunker round for example, which you see the name down there because we got the nice highlights. Uh, and you're, you're placing it, and you're taking a lot of time and loving care to put it exactly where you want it. Uh, one thing that used to be a drag was you could easily kind of accidentally bump the controller and move it out of the position, and all that time and loving care that you put into it is now down the drain. But if you have it where you lock it, like Adam does here, we've given you the to lock it. So, uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love you more. Uh, so now we have this nice piece exactly where we want it. It's locked. It is going to stay there until the end of time or when, uh, if Adam decides to unlock it and move it wherever he likes. So you see we have this half a bunker. I mean, who out there wants half a bunker? Hey, only that guy. <laughs> you, out of here, security. Okay, no one wants half a bunker is the correct answer. So, if you have something that repeats, so like a road, a racetrack, we've seen a lot of uh, cool racetracks and stuff like that in different course maps. Um, some, if you have something that you want to repeat, now we've given you the ability to dupe it. So, Adam has, yeah, <laughs> this guy <Wow>. loves duping. <laughs> okay, so Adam has duped the base and uh, he is getting it lined up and you know sometimes it used to be a little bit of a pain to get things exactly lined up uh, if you bump the controller and then the axes were kind of screwed up um, so we want you've spoken we've listened and we've created a magnet system how do magnets work
magnets in 2012. Everyone can vote for that. <laughs> okay, so is, if you enable magnets and you put two pieces together, like Adam's doing here, that bridge really easily magnetize, Jimi Hendrix is back, uh, the, uh, the pieces magnetize together, fit together seamlessly. So if you're going to build something like a bridge here, you can build it, uh, this used to take, I think we timed it, and I think it was nine years to build a bridge. Now. <laughs> Uh, it's taking under nine seconds, so that's a huge improvement. Uh, so if you're building something, a racetrack, a, a bridge, a wall, something that repeats, uh, you just can keep duping and magnetizing uh, and build what you wanted to build in a fraction of the time. So less focus on actually the mechanics of building, more on the actual creativity. So we built a couple things, we're liking it, and uh, now let's talk about how it looks. So if you take a look at the uh, both half of base round, bunker round, that we've slapped together here. Uh, take a look at the lighting. This thing looks like it is high noon. This also is a kick-ass halo map. Ooh, um, halo joke. Nice. Uh, it looks bright. I mean, it's practically glowing. So if you're in a, a low lighting si kind of situation and you would have something that looks like it's on the center of the sun, uh, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. But if we go into player mode now, boom, dynamic lighting. Okay, so, yeah, give it up for dynamic lighting. <laughs> All forge objects now accept shadows from the environment or other forge objects. And if you see, uh, like down there um, where Adam just was, forge objects also cast shadows on the environment. So that means anything you put down in forge is going to be a lot more integrated with the environment. So we want to give you the ability to create things faster and more efficiently, but we also have taken a lot of time and care uh, to um, make sure that whatever you create is going to be beautiful. Did um, you say what the lighting system is called? Because it kind of sort of has the most amazing name ever. It does. The name is so amazing that uh, it's a trade secret and I cannot talk about it lest I be killed by Max. Um, it, is, it is a very um, long, multi-syllabled lighting system that I personally am not smart enough to talk about. I know what it does, um, but the... It has yeah. the word probe in it. We'll yeah. just leave it at that. Yeah, let's just stay away from probe talk here. <laughs> um, but it's really cool, uh, and as you can see, it looks great. Um, the one other thing I wanted to talk about before we move off of the beauty of Forge is uh, take a look at this object here. So a lot of very talented artists have spent an awful lot of time uh, to overhaul all the Forge objects. So you, the fan out there, are spending tons of time and effort into making these things with a lot of time and care, and we wanted to make sure that all the Forge objects uh, are look just as good or comparable with what is in what are in MP and single player maps. So everything is going to be a lot more beautiful, easy, and efficient to make. So now, let's see, we've got a little bridge uh, going over the ravine. I've got money on saying Adam cannot make the jump, so let's see. You can do it. You can do it. So close. Oh my god. <laughs> Not even close, as you can see. Okay, so in the past, if we wanted to make a jump like that, we would have to alter gravity. And that would apply to the entire map. So if you wanted to create low gravity, you'd have basically a low gravity map. That's right. Yeah! Yeah! I mean, y you guys are so smart, I don't even need to tell you what's going on here. Um, but for, that one, that. for the one guy out there, uh, yes, I'm talking about you, sir, who uh, looks confused, uh, let me just describe it. What Adam has done is laid down what's known as a player trait zone. Uh, what is a player trait zone? It's a player trait zone. Come on. Uh, the name describes it. In that little zone that he's made, which uh, he scaled to just really the size of the bridge, you can affect uh, the Spartan's traits. So let's say uh, speed, jump size, uh, or jump height rather, uh, damage absorption, a lot of other things. And uh, so now with that trait zone laid down, let's see if he can now make the jump. Oh yeah. Max, you were supposed to tell me that I, I should have bet on that joke. No, you were betting against me. Oh, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, you pay me, so anyway, it all comes from him. Uh, anyway, so uh, 
we easily made that jump with the, um, with the player trait zones. And we're really fired up because we think, uh, in addition to a lot of the other improvements, we're really fired up to see what you, the fans, are going to create with these new player trait zones. Okay, so we're going across the other side now. And, oh, okay. We made it easily, but uh, unfortunately, we did not stick to landing in Mary Lou Retton or Carrie Strug's fashion, depending on how old you are. Uh, me, I'm old school, so he didn't pull a Mary Lou Retton, and we got to do something to change that. Okay, so we can easily lay down another uh, player trait zone, and in that zone, we can do something like uh, either overshield when he gets in there or uh, damage resistance and um, alter how much damage he can take. Uh, invulnerable. I have a feeling that he is going to make the jump now. Um, <laughs> I know. I, it's like ESP. So, let's see. Uh, Max, double my salary if he makes it. Okay, good. Done. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you heard it. Double my salary, so that's going to happen. Now i got to pay you 10 bucks an hour? <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm, I'm welcome to the big times now. Okay, so those are just a couple things uh, that we put into Forge for Halo 4, but uh, we're really fired up to see what exactly you guys are going to be creating when we put these powers uh, in your hands. Yeah, thank you, Mike, and we actually have a, uh, something else related to this that we're going to be showing you all in just a little, just a little while after Kynan talks for a bit. Um, so my next sentence may or may not be a hint at what that something later is, but in my opinion, it sure does look like you can make some awesome horse challenges on that map. Ooh, I wonder what's coming next. But Forge is only one of the modes coming in Halo 4, so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the multiplayer experiences that you will be having come November 6th. Oh, magical guys in the back, could you switch from video to whatever the other thing is? Laptop? All right. Thank you. Kynan? Yeah, so uh, the Halo 4 campaign is the triumphant return of the Master Chief, um, and that's awesome. But I'm pretty partial to multiplayer. Do we have any other multiplayer fans in here? <laughs> <laughs> so multiplayer uh, takes place as the Halo Infinity multiplayer experience. It is all in the infinity, and uh, there's two components to that. First is Spartan Ops, and the other is War Games. Uh, Spartan Ops takes place six months after the events of the Halo 4 campaign. And it's our ongoing, episodic, cooperative experience. Um, everything that you do in Spartan Ops works towards building up your personal character so you can customize your loadouts and use that experience across both modes, uh, Spartan Ops and War Games. Um, each week, you get one episode of an ongoing CG series. And in addition, you also have uh, five missions that are available. And this continues on. Uh, War Games, the second component, is the traditional competitive multiplayer component of Halo 4. <laughs> it, plays, it takes place in a Spartan battle simulation where players can pit their skills against one another in order to basically, uh, A, prove themselves, and the other thing is that they can update their character and, and customize their options in ways that now affect more than just their cosmetic options. So our new player progression system allows you to tailor your play style uh, to whatever you want. So you can change your loadouts, your weapons, your armor abilities, and all new armor mods, which again let you kind of tailor your play style. Uh, we have a bunch of new weapons and some interesting surprises, but coming up next, we've got a bunch of our game modes. So we have Capture the Flag, Oddball, and King of the Hill returning, which are all customized now to be new for the Halo 4 sandbox. But we have some all new modes like Regicide. Regicide is an update to our free-for-all mode, or it's a new free-for-all mode, completely new to Halo 4, where the player in lead is king. The king has a bounty over their head, which you can see here, and every other player on the field knows exactly where they are at all times. If you kill the king, you get the bounty and that basically causes some wild uh, lead swings late on in the game. Everybody when knows... When we do our playtest at the studio, there is one person who will uh, remain unnamed 
<coughs> David Ellis, that when you get right at the end, he will purposely stay second, and then like the last five seconds, he'll make sure he's right by the king, and then kill the king, and then win the game. It is the most infuriating thing that I've ever seen. So if you see that person that I did not name, David Ellis, you can maybe tweet him. Tell him that's dirty. Not nice. <laughs> Sorry, so we ahead. also have Regicide here at the show, so you can play it. Um, Don't do that. Over in the Halo 4 it's area. Not nice. One of the other modes that we have is Infinity Slayer. So Infinity Slayer is a new Team Slayer mode, uh, which, allows, which has two new components. The first is our new scoring system, and the second is our ordinance system. As you can see here, as you uh, build up your ordinance meter by playing well, you will eventually be able to call in your own power-ups and power weapons. So power-ups make a return to Halo. Uh, we have the overshield, but for Halo 4, we also have uh, speed boost and damage boost. Damage boost is an increase in the amount of damage that you do whenever you have this power up. So if you see somebody glowing red, just know that they're going to deal more damage. In other words, it's not going to end well for you. <laughs> Unless you're red, then it'll be okay. Yep. We also have... Uh, we have three maps here at the show, the first of which is Haven. Haven is a small-scale forerunner map. Um, it takes place deep within the clouds of Requiem, and it's basically a two-tier map. Uh, there's some jump gaps in the center, so if you're engaging people in fighting and you're running into some trouble, you're getting damaged, you can always drop back to the lower tier uh, on the jump gaps. Haven is awesome. I can't wait till you guys play it. Next up we have a drift. Uh, a drift takes place in a recommissioned mining vessel that the UNSC are using towards the war effort. It's a symmetrical map and there's an outer ring on it that has some man cannons that launch you, but then it all converges into the center room which has the mech in the middle. Um, and again, do we have any uh, sword